What's going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael and welcome to Fudge Muppet. In today's video we're going to be talking all about werewolves, in specific the werewolf perks and which ones are the most worth getting the fastest. You see, because you don't really have to spend perk points as such on the werewolf perks, you will end up getting all of them. However, I'm going to tell you which ones to prioritize getting first thing and then kind of talk you through which ones are better than the other ones. The strategy I'm going to show you is also going to let you get all all of these perks as fast as possible, which is something that most people don't do. Most people just go for what sounds cool or will make them the most powerful at the start, but then they end up very slow in the speed at which they acquire all of these perks. So there are only eight of these werewolf perks. However, Bestial Strength, which is the first perk, has four ranks. So starting out, that's what you're going to get. It's the only thing you can get. And at the first rank, you'll do 25% more damage as a werewolf. Now you may think, where am I going to go from here? Maybe I should just keep investing in this and get stronger and stronger and stronger. Or maybe I should improve one of those really cool totem powers that I have. But what you're actually going to do is you're going to head to the right and you're going to get Animal Vigor. Animal Vigor will give you a 100 point bonus to health and stamina while you're a werewolf. So this is a pretty good perk, however, it is still a bridging perk in the strategy I'm using. From Animal Vigor, you'll want to go to Gorging, and this makes Feeding heal twice as much health. Again, this is another decent perk, I'd say Animal Vigor is better, but Gorging still pretty good. But this is where things get interesting because after gorging, you can get Savage Feeding. This makes you able to feed off most dead creatures. You can't feed off undead, automatons, or daedra, but everything else is meat on the menu. Being able to feed off creatures instead of just people will only provide you with half the extended time of your werewolf form. However, what it allows you to do is basically roam around Skyrim, usually in just one transformation stage, and just kill the shit out of all the creatures and just start feeding on absolutely everything. This will allow you to gain more werewolf experience faster and unlock all of these werewolf perks really quickly. So this is basically the most efficient and effective way to go. You just go straight up to savage feeding, you only put one perk point into bestial strength to start with and then you just make yourself able to feed on creatures and you just run around unlocking the rest of the tree. So as you do that and unlock the rest of the tree, before you get any of the totem based perks you'll want to actually go back to bestial strength where we started and get rank 2, 3, and 4 of it. Each rank adds another 25% more damage as a werewolf. So at rank 2, 50% more, rank 3, 75% more, and then at rank 4, you'll do 100% more damage as a werewolf. This is so much better than getting any of the totem-based perks. And it's obviously going to make you more powerful than those perks we got up the right-hand branch. However, the main reason that we had to get those perks was so we could quickly get the rest of the perks. So bestial strength is really good, animal vigor is really good, gorging is pretty good, and savage feeding makes you progress really fast. However, this leaves us with the totem perks. All of these totem perks are related to the powers you get from the totems which you can unlock for doing the totems of Hercene quest with the companions. So the default power as a werewolf is a howl, which is represented by the totem of fear, which you can use if you want to switch back from the other totems so you can get your howl power back. This will make enemies run away in terror, and you can just go mow them down as a werewolf. The problem with this is that the fear only affects enemies up to level 25, and then when you get this totem of terror perk in the werewolf skill tree, it'll affect enemies into their 30s, kind of up to about level 35 it seems in my experience. So once you're past like level 40, it becomes completely useless. The other two powers you can have are Scent of Blood and Howl of the Pack. Scent of Blood lets you detect life in a large radius for 60 seconds. This is decent if you're looking to hunt down creatures to feed on to progress through all of the other perks, but personally I just find it's not that useful. It's more cool for roleplaying reasons to feel like a werewolf, sniffing enemies and hunting them down. You unlock Scent of the Blood with Totem of the Hunt. Now Hell of the Pack is a power that lets you summon two wolf spirits to fight by your side. You get this by using the Totem of Brotherhood. Now if we take a look in the perk tree, you can progress onto Totem of Ice Brothers and then Totem of the Moon. Totem of Ice Brothers turns these wolves into ice wolves, making them more powerful. And then Totem of the Moon turns them into these spectral werewolves, which again are even more powerful. Now if we look at the Totem of the Predator perk, which is related to the Scent of the Blood power, which you get by picking Totem of the Hunt, what it does is increase the range of your Detect Life 
and shows whether or not the targets in this range are not in combat, searching, or actively in combat. Again, this is a cool power to have, but it's not nearly as useful as, say, Totem of the Moon, where you summon two spectral werewolves to help you in battle. So basically, as you can see here, the how power becomes useless at a high level. The detect life power is cool, but it's not that useful. And the summoning power where you get two spectral allies is going to help you in combat. Obviously, these allies aren't going to be as effective and powerful as you are as a werewolf, but it's still better than having nothing. And they're not necessarily weak, although I must say they're not godly powerful or anything like that. So in terms of picking your perks, you've gone up the right hand side and then you've gone back to bestial strength and you wonder, well, where should I go next? Well, if you are early on in the game and you aren't anywhere near level 35 or 40, you may as well get Totem of Terror first, seeing as the ability to scare people away is actually quite useful while it works. However, if that isn't really your thing and you're more interested in role-playing, you might want to get Totem of the Predator before that and then use that Detect Life to keep going through Skyrim, hunting down creatures and progressing faster with the rest of the perks, such as the Totem of Ice Brothers and the Totem of the Moon. So in terms of raw effectiveness, if you're a late game character, I'd just say go straight to Totem of the Moon. If you're an early game character, I'd say use Totem of Terror. And if you want Totem of the Predator and you just really like the Detect Life ability, then go for that first, obviously. But that's more of a personal choice. For pure efficiency, you got to have the Spectral Werewolf allies. And that wraps up this video on werewolf perks in Skyrim. Obviously, they're all worth getting simply because there's no cost to getting them all. But in terms of which ones are the most worth getting, you've got to get bestial strength up to savage feeding. Get back to bestial strength because bestial strength is really good, as is animal vigor. And then just go straight up to the totem of the moon if you're a high level. Or if not, stick with totem of terror until you're a high enough level where it becomes useless. And then go with totem of the moon. So thank you for watching. Social media links are in the description, as is the link to our Patreon if you want to support this channel. My name is Michael. This has been Werewolf Perks. Is it worth it in Skyrim? And I look forward to nerding out with you all again very soon.